people, 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 wake up. There's only one fantastic Negrito in the world, and right now I'm in the blues kitchen, getting ready to cook. Fantastic Negrito is a Grammy Award winning musician based in Oakland, California. One of 15 children, neither his life nor career have exactly been plain sailing, to say the very least. We caught up to discuss his brand new record, Please Don't Be Dead, scheduled for release on the 15th of June this year. And Fantastic Negrito performs a gut-wrenching version of Lead Belly's In The Pines. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for weekly episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Fantastic Negrito. Yes, sir. Welcome to Blues Kitchen once again. It's a pleasure to be back in the Blues Kitchen. How are you? Mm. Better than some, not as good as others, but I'm in the middle and that's where I like to be. Present? Right here, right yes, now? Yes, man. Not too, I don't get too happy and I don't get too sad. <laughs> So last time you were on the podcast, yes. we, didn't, we didn't film an interview with you, but you uh, um, sat down with my partner in crime, Gaz, and listening back to that actually a little while ago, it was lovely to have you on, but I kind of feel like we're a year late, but I still want to wish you or say, you know, congratulations for the Grammy last Thank year. Thank you so I much. Mean, what an achievement, you know, to, to be winning good. a Grammy. Yeah, I mean, what's the reception been like around the world when you've been out on tour since? Well, it's been good. People are uh, very happy. And I think that that makes me happy. I see people that are pretty happy, I think, because of the story. I mean, it was uh, the time that I won the Grammy. I had no record label. I was just a guy, you know, in a little funky room making records. And um, I think it gave people the feeling and gave people the inspiration that, that it can all happen. I think the year that I won, 2016, last year, myself and Chance the Rapper, we were the two people with no labels that, that won. So I think it was an achievement for the small guy. Yeah, which everybody loves. I mean, it yeah. was well deserved. The record is amazing. Thank you very much. But I think kind of more important than that as well, it's that if, if you can do it without a label, anyone can do it. It's that yeah. kind of attitude. I don't know about anybody now. Hold I mean, yeah, on. You know, but you, <laughs> just kidding, I'm joking. You know what I mean. You know what no, I mean. no, you're right. You were saying I think that, that and that's good. I think it's, it's great to, uh, I like to be uh, the person who can be inspirational. That makes me feel like I'm making a contribution. Yeah. And that's, uh, as an artist, that's kind of, that's exactly where I want to be. I want to know that I'm making this stuff and that I'm, I'm contributing something to the uh, human saga. <laughs> <laughs> so since you've been, or since you won that and you've been around the world on tour, has there been any particular standout memories of the last year before we talk about your, your new record? The last year, let's see, uh, reindeer, reindeer Stew in Norway, that was kind of standout. Okay. I like that. Tastes uh, good? Was it excellent. <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. Poor, poor Rudolph. Yeah, but it was, it was good. I really loved the Cambridge Folk Festival. Okay. That was really electric. That was a standout show. You could feel um, yeah. something was happening, you know, and that's with the audience and the performance. Uh, and Sweden. Sweden. And Cyprus, too. Cyprus. Really wow, you have just seen some incredible. Action. In Cyprus, they made up their own fantastic Negrito for an encore. And I thought, wow, they write, wrote a song for an encore. <laughs> that was, uh, it was just really great to bond with people all over the world. Um, I'm really interested to know how you feel you might have developed as a musician in the last couple of years, because it's been quite a mad experience for you. And um, a friend of mine was at your show yesterday, mm. and I understand you were telling a story to the audience about t touring with... Chris Cornell, oh, yeah, yeah. and you found that all these musicians, like Chris Cornell and his band, sadly he's not with us anymore, but yeah. were re rehearsing really, really hard. Yeah. And then you go backstage and some of your band are like getting a bit stoned yeah. and stuff. And um, I'm curious to know how much Oh, they attitude... hate me now. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm no, curious true, to know how your attitude has changed to, to being on the road. And are you taking it more seriously? Is that a fair way of putting it? Or has your... Um, intent change? Do you see what I mean? Have you well, I've always taken it seriously. Now? I mean, that's how you, you're going to get to the uh, plateau, but you got to take it seriously. So I've always uh, taken music very seriously and respected the craft and the skills of, of other musicians. I think, um, you know, being around people like Chris Cornell, I mean, Chris Cornell was a lesson. I, I tell people that all the time. I showed up in uh, Oslo, Norway, and no idea what I, you know what was going to happen because I, 
here you are playing, you know, in front of 3,000 Scandinavians who are sitting very quietly <laughs> in this fancy opera house. So that I was freaked out. I was like, holy f this is going to be terrible, this, this tour. But, you know, I sat at the side of the stage and just watched, you know, Chris Cornell do it. Which and like, how it, there's a way to do it, you know. And uh, I felt like I went to Chris Cornell school, kind of. And it was, it was great. And not only the European tour, but then we did the American tour. And then by the time we got to uh, Temple of the Dog reunion tour, I was... I had a nickname for him. I was calling him Christmas Cornell. <laughs> so I was like, man, every, time, well, every time he called me, it was like, will you come open for me? Will you hang out with me and my band? We, oh, like, I see. We're going to play the Royal Albert Hall. We're going to play Madison Square Garden. He was just exposing me to so many people. And I credit him a lot with the Grammy in a way because he just helped me get so much exposure. I think voters knew my name because Chris Cornell was hanging around this guy named Negrito. And so so how, did, how did you guys meet? I, I think I was in Australia doing the... Um, Byron Bay Blues Festival, oh, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think the manager, they walked in the room like, hey, Chris Cornell's looking for a, a, an opening and act. I'm like, well, good, let him keep looking. <laughs> it's nothing to do with me. Why are you telling me? You know, I, I thought we're like apples and oranges. No way. You know? And then I think the next day or two, they're like, hey, you know what? Actually, Chris Cornell heard you, and he wants you to open for him. And I was terrified because I thought it just won't work like this. Like, I was thinking like the Grunge Soundgarden uh, group of people and... Uh, then me, it just seemed like out of place and not like it wouldn't work. But I it did yeah, work there, right? Well, you got to give, let's give credit to those grunge fans and Chris Cornell because it, all this stuff is tied together, you know, and that's what, uh, that's a lesson, you know, that you just don't know. You don't know who's out there pulling for you. Could come from the strangest place. I would never in a million years would have thought myself and Chris Cornell could do anything but have a beer or a cup of tea together. But... Uh, songs are songs, music is music, and he was such a uh, huge advocate for me. Yeah. Cause the most, the traumatic thing about Chris was that man, he was past fifty, and I thought, man, isn't all this like drama and trauma like over by the time we're at that age? Isn't it over? So it's kind of yeah. scared the out of me. I was like, God. I think it did a lot of people actually. Yeah, and um, I remember the times we'd be backstage, and you know, he'd talk a little bit about his friend Kurt. Mm -hmm. Cobain, he was, you know, it's always, he, he had an opinion on that. And yeah. it kind of contradicted what happened. So it's interesting you bring up, um, or we start talking about Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Because you're going to do a performance very shortly. That's of true. In the Pines. I'm gonna, in the which Pines. Which they reinterpreted as Where'd You Sleep Last Night, very right. famously on MTV Unplugged. Right. Um, the song's made famous by Lead Belly. Lead Belly, originally. Um, I'm really curious to know when you first came across that tune the fact that you've called it in the pines i'm assuming means it's a traditional yeah version. i grew up man my my uh people are all from the south you know from rural virginia and louisiana so i grew up with all southern folks and i grew up kind of hating that music to be honest with you because it was it was hip-hop why did i need that say, so, yeah the modern version of that so i i didn't i didn't say hate it i just didn't i never it was there always so i was like it's just i never thought about it I had an, uh, a great uncle was my grandmother's brother. His name was Horace Brown. And he was like a character. He had one arm and sit on the porch and just talk mm. shit. And he would drink Johnny Walker red and grape juice. And he was just... Johnny Walker and grape yeah, juice. Yeah, he was into that sure. music, which he, he always called it country music. Yeah. That's what he called it. I'd call and that country music. I didn't that. understand. I'm like, why does he call it country music? It didn't sound like the country music. And these were all black players with guitars sitting down so he's like it's country music boy <laughs> amos he'd always call me amos amos my grandmother's like stop calling him amos and he's like that's my that's amos man i love amos <laughs> did you he, ever find out why no nah, he's just out of <laughs> mind i loved him <laughs> <laughs> but he was I, I i i was gonna use his name before fantastic negrito i was like you know i'm gonna come out with this character it's gonna be called horse brown like my great uncle but i i came out with a uh, fantastic negrito instead so yeah, you'd heard all this music, but it's never really... I couldn't really relate to it to after I'd lived and gotten to my 40s and I'd failed a little bit and yeah. lost my playing hand, you know, and buried my brother and, you know, and things, had a record deal and didn't make it, all this stuff, you know, when I'd lived and failed enough, then I, suddenly that music was like, oh, shit, I, I get it now. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, so, took a long was time. the Lead Belly version the first version you heard of that yeah, song? Yeah, exactly. It was? Yes. And... How, uh, oh, well, Black Betty and all that stuff, you know, they, yeah. I had uh, drinking relatives from the South and <laughs> who were into that. So. 
Amazing. Well, I think maybe it's time for performance, if that's okay. Performance time, yes. Yeah. Maybe you'd be kind enough to, to introduce your tune. I'm going to do my version of In the Pines, originally recorded by Lead Belly, and then later recorded by Kurt Cobain under the title, Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Oh, black girl, that girl don't lie to me. Tell me, where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't shine. Well, I shivered the whole night through. Black girl, black girl, where will you go? To the place where the cold winds blow. In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't shine. Well, I shivered the whole night through. Sound like this. Black girl, black girl, your man is gone. Now you travel the road alone. And you raise that child all by yourself. Then the policeman shot him down. Black girl, black girl, where will you go? To the place where the cold winds blow. In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't shine. Oh, I shivered the whole night through. Sound like this. Mm. I know that your heart keeps on breaking Into a million pieces Well, I know that your heart keeps on, keeps on breaking I know Where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines Where the sun don't shine Ooh. In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't shine. Oh, oh. It don't shine no more. 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 Mmm.